So that's how you know when your meatballs are done, it should sound like you're slapping a butt. Maddie Matheson is a larger than life chef who has undeniably left his mark on the culinary world. From fine dining to fast food, Maddie Matheson's impact is felt on taste buds all over Canada. Here we're going to talk about the top 10 untold truths about Maddie Matheson that even his most devoted fans will find surprising. I think my beard's slightly longer than yours. I know, okay? I'm lacking. Maddie Matheson and breakfast. Breakfast? Oh yeah, most important meal of the day. What gets you out of bed in the morning? Do you always rise and shine with two eggs, toast, and a cup of coffee? If so, then you and Maddie Matheson are living culinary worlds apart. Maddie Matheson is the type who doesn't like to eat traditional breakfast foods. You won't see him sitting down to a stack of pancakes smothered in maple syrup. No, he'd much rather have a bowl of Vietnamese pho than cereal. You can't expect this culinary wizard to do anything ordinary. It wouldn't be too surprising to find out he enjoys his bowl of soup while taking a bath in the morning. No, actually, that's not a bad idea. Hash is one of his favorite things to cook and eat in the morning, too. What's the secret ingredient in his hash? He takes all of his leftovers in the refrigerator and throws them into the mix. A whiz in the kitchen like himself probably has quite a few interesting things in his fridge. No one will ever say that his hash is boring, since the mixed match of food probably is as unique as he is. Shout out to Mr. Spencer. Love you, Dad. <laughs> Fix my teeth, bro. Three simple cooking tips. You got a lot to learn. Will you teach me your ways? Don't you wish you could whip up something delicious in your kitchen like Maddie Matheson? It's not as difficult as you might think it is. Maddie Matheson has refined the process in which he pumps out delicious food that can make anyone drool all over themselves. You would think that anyone as talented as he is would have a long laundry list of things that the average person should do to churn out delicious food meal after meal. Surprisingly, his list is so small you could write it down on a tiny piece of paper and still have some room to spare. What are the three tips Maddie Matheson has for every culinary wannabe genius out there? He says that you should invest in high quality knives, a cutting board, and cookware. It's really quite simple. Good tools of the trade are needed if you want to produce high quality food. He says your pantry should be stocked with high quality staples like flour, salt, and olive oil. Don't skimp and buy the cheap stuff since these items are the bedrock of your meals. Lastly, he says ditch your spices after they become old. Those little tins of spices in your cupboard have a shelf life and you need to be aware of it. If you're in doubt, then it's probably best to throw them away. Spices lose flavor over time, and that's why you should get rid of them after they've lost their potency. Do I look like I'm made of money? Romantic lasagna recipe. Tommy feels great, and I'm about to go eat some lasagna. Peace! Do you lack a certain zing in your love life? If so, Mr. Matheson has the perfect solution for you. No, it's not going to McDonald's and having a candlelight dinner. Some of you might think his solution to the staleness in your relationship may be to get matching tattoos. But no, his solution is the cheesiest, gooeyest, meatiest layered lasagna that you've ever had. It is his own personal recipe that he guarantees will light a spark to your love life. Matheson's trick to the perfect lasagna is to cut back on the tomatoes, claiming they make it too soupy. He focuses more on the meat and cheese aspects of the lasagna. The cheese is amazing. It melts in my mouth and in my hands. Going on to say, he thinks this is how Italians should make their lasagna, and then kind of walking it back altogether. The number of layers he uses for this lasagna is what really puts it over the top. Oh my goodness gracious. That's a work of art. Featuring over five layers of meat, four layers of cheese, and four layers of pasta, this is one heavyweight lasagna. He even goes on to say that Garfield the Cat, lover of all things lasagna, would be very happy and excited by the dish. He goes on to serve his lasagna to a chef that appeared on Top Chef Canada, as well as a reporter from Vice News. They both loved the dish, one of them even insinuating that it was better than his mom's lasagna. And in the very end, Maddie makes his bold statement that if you make this lasagna for someone you love, he guarantees it will set the mood. Whether or not this lasagna will set off fireworks in the bedroom, we'll leave for you to decide. But one thing is for sure, Maddie Matheson makes one of the most mouthwatering lasagna recipes ever. Matheson was kicked out of high school. Send him to the principal's office and have him expelled! One look at Maddie, and you know right away he's not a guy to be messing with. The sight of him in a dark alley would make some people turn the other way. It shouldn't be all that much of a surprise then that he was kicked out of school for his wild behavior. Nope, Maddie wasn't expelled, he was told not to come back. What's the difference? Getting expelled is like someone giving you the boot where the sun doesn't shine. That's a stupid analogy. Oh, okay. It wasn't that extreme, but the school made it clear that they didn't want him back. Maddie got the drift and didn't go back to where he wasn't wanted. He somehow found his way to Lakeshore Catholic High School. It wasn't exactly the perfect fit considering that it was a conservative Catholic school and he had green hair and painted fingernails. Maddie is a realist 
and understood that he needed to receive an education. He was able to tame down his antics enough to graduate and move forward with his life. It goes to show that he has a softer side to him after all. The loud, boisterous behemoth of a man can somehow find the inner strength to settle down and study when the need arises. You know, if you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. Maddie and the Metal Band much to the surprise of everyone, including himself, Matty performed quite well at Toronto's Humber College's culinary program. All the other schools he applied to rejected him, but this one place gave him the opportunity of a lifetime. His grades were good, and he seemed to really progress in a field that took him by surprise. At no time did he ever want to become a celebrity chef or cook in the big leagues. It's almost as if fame and fortune landed right in his lap. None of it was planned, and his actions were as such that most people would have ended up as a failure. He's the luckiest kid in the world. Just two weeks before Matty was set to graduate from said Humber College culinary program, he actually dropped out in order to go on tour with a bunch of his friends' metal band. Yep, after all that work and being right at the finish line, he just left it all behind and it wasn't even his own band. In fact, he claimed that he wasn't even really a roadie, more of a mascot. Just because you're not in the band doesn't mean you're not in the band. He said this because he was often just too intoxicated to actually help carry any of the instruments. Thankfully, all this wasn't too much of a setback for him, and after a short stint on tour with this metal band, Matty did get back on track and continued on with his culinary career. So he didn't exactly throw it all away at least. Matty ended up working under Rang Nguyen, who taught him how to prepare classic French dishes. He's one of my best friends, one of my oldest friends. We went to Vietnam together. And I fell in love. Was it a stroke of luck? Probably not. Anyone worth their salt had to know this guy was going places, and Nguyen had to see his ability right from the start. Maybe ditching school and going on the road wasn't such a bad idea after all. It's probably a bad idea for most, but not for a guy who lives life by the seat of his pants. His wild ways are behind him. My name in, in Gaelic means gift of God, son of bear. Matty was once a bit of a party animal. Even he would admit that he used to take his love of everything intoxicating to an extreme. A heart attack at the age of 29 couldn't even slow down his frantic partying. Most people his age would have slowed their roll and put their partying days behind them. Matty isn't most people, and he picked back up right where he left off after having a heart attack. No one will ever doubt that he's as strong as an ox, considering how he kept up his lifestyle after having what some could consider a debilitating setback. Oh my god! How are you still alive? For Matty, a heart attack was merely a bump in the road and nothing else. It wasn't until several of his good friends sat him down and had an intervention that things changed. Matty will be the first to admit that his lifestyle was getting the best of him. No one can live the sort of fast-paced rock star life he was living and not burn out quickly. It's a good thing that today he's clean and sober since eaters and cookers alike can all benefit from his existence. We all should be thankful that he accepted the help when it was offered to him. He's not done leaving his imprint on the culinary world, and there's still quite a bit of stuff out there for him to explore. Can't get rid of me that easily, can you, mate? Maddie's tattoos are as unique as he is. It's impossible to look at Maddie Matheson and not notice his tattoos. He's got tattoos all over his body. Some people get a tattoo and leave it at that. Not Maddie. The collection of tattoos on his body is like an art museum. Is that a tattoo? Uh-huh. <laughs> Who normal now? You hear me, America? In fact, his most meaningful, which comes as no surprise, is his son's name, MacArthur, which is proudly tattooed downward across the chef's chest. Another tattoo that any fan of his would recognize is the DSOL that's tattooed on his right knuckles. This is an acronym that stands for Dead Set on Living. It has a very interesting background story to it. Matty was originally going to open a bar called Dead Set on Destruction, but after he suffered the heart attack, his friends said he should call it Dead Set on Living. His friends from the band Cancer Bats also made a song about him called Dead Set on Living. This song would also become the theme for one of his shows called Dead Set on Life, which aired on Vice. With such a great backstory, you can understand why this tattoo is very important to him. It's very near and dear to my heart, so no wise packs about it. In a funny twist, what is, in his opinion, one of the worst tattoos he has is also one of the most meaningful. This tattoo is dedicated to his sister Sarah, who had to deal with a rocky relationship with her ex-husband. It's a tattoo of a heart with a name through it, which he got done somewhere in Albuquerque, New Mexico, by someone Matty says was probably under the influence of something or other. Although he wasn't thrilled with the resulting tattoo, it does represent something important to him and that makes it worthwhile. The tattoos on Matty's body prove that he's not afraid to go under the needle for a lasting memory. It appears that Matheson is actually starting to run out of real estate to put his tattoos on, so he's just gonna have to start getting creative to find space for some new ones. Something tells us he'll do just that. I know you can do it! I believe in you! Matty rocks out Instagram. Since when do you wear high tops?
What, my kicks? Ah, it's nothing. I just use these for Instagram. How much time do you spend on Instagram? You probably go there to see pictures of your friends and family's latest fiascos. Some people use Instagram for the dumbest things, but not Maddie. He's chosen to put his camera to good use and take all kinds of exciting pictures. Any foodie who loves to look at everything food related needs to follow Maddie on Instagram right now. I'm on this new diet, so I look at pictures of food I can't have. Some people hate on food pictures, not me. It's about so much more than him as a person, and he offers a very interesting glimpse of what it's like in his world of food. If you follow Maddie on Instagram, then you'll get to see other food celebrities too. It seems there are all kinds of people rubbing shoulders with him. Don't be surprised if there are pictures of him mingling with famous names that aren't in the world of food too. His rock star status ensures that there's a constant flow of people who are worthy of taking a snapshot. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Maddie the Sneakerhead. Shoe fight! <laughs> No golf shoes. You might have one or two pairs of shoes. Some of you know real sneakerheads who might have as many as a dozen pairs. Maddie, well, he takes his love to sneakers to a level that most couldn't imagine. He's previously stated that he has 200 pairs of sneakers. Yeah, that's a lot of shoes. You need so many. A person who has as many sneakers as he has must have a special place to keep them all in. He actually claims that he used to collect jackets, then he switched over to shoes. He has a shoe closet that would make any sneaker fanatic jealous. He says that he's got a lot of Jordans, which, let's be frank, is an understatement. And he likes the classics from Nike, Reebok, Adidas, and Gazelle. What's funny about all this, though, is that he also says that even though he owns all these shoes, he actually wears Vans skate highs 80% of the time. So it really is a collection more than wearing a new pair of kicks all the time. Being a sneakerhead is a growing trend that isn't going to die down anytime soon. My father wears his sneakers in the pool. <laughs> Sneakers! Some think of their sneakers as an investment that grows in value over time. Especially a collection like Maddie's, where most of the shoes go unworn. But hey, a pair of worn in the kitchen Maddie Matheson Van skate highs probably has a market too. A much less talked about section of the shoe closet are dress shoes, but Maddie actually claims he has some fancy red wings and that if he goes to a fancy wedding, he wears a pair of black docks. Maddie Matheson hates his own cooking. How can it be? Maddie Matheson can't stand his own cooking? How is that even possible? Well, it shouldn't come as much of a surprise to anyone who spends any time in the kitchen. You just get sick and tired of eating the food that you cook day in and day out. Another common theme with chefs is they tend to dislike their own menus quickly. Maddie has been quoted as saying he changes his menu all the time. A lot of the time he'll make a menu and a week after he'll hate it, but he has to keep it for three months. Having to keep something on the menu when you'd like to replace it leads to chefs saying they don't like their menus, even though in fact the food is more than likely pretty amazing. There's something of a contradiction, but heaven for the effort. Proof in point, he also goes on to say that his favorite dish from his restaurant's menu is the steak tartare. Can't hate it that much if you've got a favorite. What can I say? Uh, I'm hard on myself. We've got a lot more great videos for you to fill up on. Just tap that screen. And if you never want to miss out, click on that subscribe button and hit that bell to join our notification squad.